Hey, what's up guys? My name is Sam. I am a photographer and filmmaker based here in Malaysia and today we're going to be finally talking about this, uh, a real world long term review of the Canon EOS R. So a little bit of context, I've been shooting with this camera for at least a year-ish, a year plus and I've taken it in all kinds of shoots, photo shoots, video shoots and today's review is mainly going to be talking about from the perspective of a photographer. We're going to be touching a little bit on video but not too much because I think that's a lot more to talk about. Hopefully I can help you give a little bit more points if you're deciding on this camera or maybe you can learn some new things if you already own this camera. So in my opinion, the R is currently one of the best cameras that you can buy, if not the best camera that you can buy. Uh, not necessarily because it has one or two really highlight specs, for example, like the 1DX3 that has 20 frames per second or maybe 5.5K RAW. Uh, it does, the R doesn't have anything that particularly stands out. But what really makes this camera, from my, in my opinion, the best is everything in total is you know and even with the announcement of the r5 i think you can't go wrong with this camera even if you buy it right now I mean, the main reason for that is because the r5 isn't going to be in the price bracket of the r i think it's going to be way more expensive so that's why i think the value on this camera really lies in its price and everything in total yes i know it's not the cheapest camera but at the same time for what you're getting there's a lot of things that are really good and why why i think makes it the best camera so the first thing I want to talk about is obviously ergonomics of the camera. While I do find this camera is one of the most ergonomic cameras in the market, if not the best compared to a lot of uh, offerings in the market, it's not too overly chunky and not too big like a DSLR, but at the same time, it's not too small that you really have to fumble about with your grip. However, I do want to point out that this red cover that I have is actually a camera cover. It's a silicone cover for your camera. It was sent to me by Easy Cover. Uh, and the main reason I have this on for the most of the time is because my hands are a little bit small. And so what happens is that because of the angular design of the camera, uh, what happens is when I was holding it at one point, my pinky actually got snagged on and it kind of like sprained it a little bit and now that this cover is on it kind of like softens up the edges so that when I grip it uh, it doesn't really hurt that much um, it's not it's not going to be it's not going to happen for everyone but this is something that I found after hours and hours of using this uh, I actually have a full review of this cover if you want to check it out links in the description but really ergonomics when you hold the camera you know especially with the RF lenses that the way the RF lenses are made for example even the 70 to 200 which in my opinion is one of the it's it's real innovation for that that lens in its category like the the camera doesn't feel weighted or front heavy it it feels very well balanced unless you put ef glass on it with the adapter uh it does it does cause it to be a, a bit front heavy and that's why you kind of have to fight with it at some times but overall ergonomically uh I, I find this to be one of the best in the mirrorless market and speaking of ergonomics obviously this the flip screen is so helpful when you're shooting in fact uh, small secret, I don't even use the <laughs> viewfinder that much already. Uh, and the main reason is because, you know, the, the, this camera uses the, the dual pixel autofocus system regardless of whether you're in live view or on the screen. And just being able to, number one, touch the screen and having also like just that flip screen just to like go up, go down, shoot like that. It just, it just helps so much when you're shooting uh, every single day because you don't, you're not bending down, you're not overly stretching your body. You can really use this screen to, to, to your full advantage. Speaking of the body of the camera, it is weather sealed. I mean, I have taken this into the rain, heavy rain. Uh, it has come fine, like it has no, there's no issues with it. And you can't talk about the body without talking about probably the most controversial feature, which is the touch bar. Uh, I actually have a video talking about how you can maximize the touch bar, link is in the description below. But I think when it first, when the R got announced, everybody got confused. Um, very much like the MacBook Pro, the touch bar when it got announced, everybody was like, why the hell is it there? Even when I started out shooting with it, I was a little bit confused as to why the touch bar existed. I could not see the value of it until I started delving into the menu or really just going deep into it. And I found out that there are a lot of things that you can actually do. It's a shame, honestly, that I find the, the touch bar gone on the R5. I would have liked to seen it there plus um, plus the joystick, but you know, I, I guess most people don't want to see it. But generally what I do is I set it up for my rate button because there's no rate button here, which is something that I like to use. Uh, another thing is I use it to change my focusing type. So from like face detect or to single point or to zone area. Uh, it's hard to grab at the beginning, but once you do, like the touch bar is something that I feel is, it's not innovative, but it's a feature that 
I, I do wish it was on a few more cameras or at least on my 1DX3 as well. So speaking about the body, we gotta talk about something that's very important and that is this. The shutter that covers the sensor when you are when you turn it off or when you're changing lenses. This to me is a small, but I don't understand why other mirrorless cameras have not done it before. It's such a small detail that makes so much sense. Obviously, it's not going to stop dust from going in, but when you have something like this, you don't have to baby your gear when you are switching out lenses, you know. So you can really just focus on getting the shot, changing your lenses, moving quickly instead of just sitting down and trying to like, oh no, I have to slowly put it, I have to put it down like that and things like that. The lens mount is, in my opinion, one of the biggest reasons why the R, the, the R camera shines so well and it's the lenses. Lenses like the 70 to 200 or the 51.2, which in my opinion is one of the best lenses that you can buy right now. And mainly because it just, it's so tech sharp. It's so sharp wide open. And it sometimes if you're in the right position, you can make it look like it's a medium format kind of background blur, which is something that I like. I understand a lot of these lenses are pretty big. They're pretty huge, they're bulky. Uh, but I think the image quality and some of the weight reduction that you get on specific lenses like the 70 to 200 or the RF 35 1.8. These are all lenses that you can really maximize. And one thing that I like to say is not, your body doesn't re really make most of the difference. It's the lenses that you will find differences in your images. And so you should be investing in lenses versus your camera body. And really the R shines because of the lenses. Unfortunately, I don't have many RF lenses and the main reason why is I still use EF cameras. It's like a good uh, balance in between EF and uh, RF. So like EF is still the most versatile. And speaking of EF glass, the one, one the good thing about the R system is that they have three kinds of adapters that help you adapt EF glass onto your uh, RF camera and really I have found no issues unlike third-party adapters that might have focusing issues when you adapt lenses. I have not had issue with autofocusing, I have not had issue with uh, IS and things like that. However, I have found that on longer focal lengths like on a 7200 and EF version, it hunts a little bit more than on the wider end of the spectrum. Stuff like the built-in ND filter is just another thing that how you can already utilize. You don't have to buy into the RF glass if it's too expensive. You can use existing EF glass and get even more out of it by having like that drop-in filter, which unfortunately I don't have yet. Uh, I do plan to buy it. Uh, just a quick note on the control ring. Personally, not really my favorite, so I never use it. So, uh, but for some people, I guess the it does it does it does have its uses. Uh, but for me, not so much. What what's really good about this camera for working professionals is the battery life. Obviously, it uses the Canon LPE 6N batteries, which is the same as the 6D, the 5D Mark IV, the 5D Mark III, the 5D Mark II, if I'm not mistaken. It's another thing where you don't have to worry about buying extra cameras if you already have these batteries. Like, batteries are expensive and you should only be buying first-party batteries, but they cost, they cost a lot of money and not having to buy more batteries or having to change batteries unlike, you know, like my 1DX Mark III, which completely new batteries, I have to invest in a new set of systems. Uh, it can cost money on your business and just having the same battery is incredible. What's even better is that you can actually charge the battery uh, straight from the USB-C uh, connection. You do need something like a MacBook Pro charger uh, that has more watts if I'm not mistaken. It's just having an extra convenience that really makes a difference. Though I have to say one thing is that it doesn't charge while the camera is uh, on. You have to turn off the camera then only it start charging. So I, I do wish they would change that. So another controversial thing that a lot of pro photographers didn't like is that it only has one SD card slot. In my personal opinion, uh, not really a big deal. Uh, the main reason why is that I'm kind of used to shooting with one SD card. You know, it's just, it's never been an issue for me. And also I think like why SD card failures happen is because of poor SD card management. So you never delete files, uh, you only format in the camera, you make sure your contacts are clean and things like that. And also I do change my cards every two years. So I've got four cameras, per, four cards per camera that I own. And every two years I would just switch those four out because they're relatively very affordable. Uh, and it just helps preserve and it lessens, lessens the chance of my cards being ruined. Speaking of cards, and like another reason why, in, why this to me is the best camera is mainly because media cost. Uh, I have the 1DX3 that has CF Express cards and those are expensive cards. Like, no beating around the bush, they, they, they are very expensive. 
and you can get SD cards for like, you can get like 12 to 14 SD cards, 64 gig SD cards for 164 CF Express. You can have more media and more pictures for lesser, uh, lesser costs, which is something that I think a lot of people don't talk about. I love my 1DX3. It's an amazing camera, but you know, the, you can't deny that it is expensive. The batteries, the cards uh, do add up. And the thing is about the R is that the batteries are relatively affordable. Uh, the cards are relatively affordable or, or they're cheap. I want to say they're just, they're just plain cheap. And that's something that you cannot quantify into a camera based on just the black and white specs alone. You have to go out and use it in the real world every single day for your business as work and you realize that having SD cards really helps you uh, financially, at least for me. The touchscreen about on this camera is really one of the most functional touchscreens on any camera that I've used. You can touch the menu, you can touch to focus, you can touch, basically just touch everything like using your phone. And why this is, in my opinion, an underrated feature is because usability. You just need flexibility to move around. And whilst I do wish they had a dial, um, that is compensated by a fantastic touchscreen. Of course, all the touchscreens on all Canon cameras are, are really, really, really good. Uh, and just being able to zoom in, pinch to zoom, just swipe next, uh, just be able to touch the screen just helps a lot. And for the most part, like what I said, I don't really use the EVF to shoot anymore. I just use the back of the screen and then just shoot it like that. And it's, it's, it looks new, I can understand, but really the usability of it on site, on shooting, just like being able to tap here wherever you want to focus just makes so much sense. When you're using the EVF, what you can use that touch to drag autofocus, but personally it's not really my favorite. And the main reason for it is I think the, the way it's implemented on this camera is a little bit difficult, mainly because it's such a huge camera. So when you so if you don't know what touch and drag autofocus is, is that if you're in the EVF, you can actually drag your focus points on the screen here. And the problem with it, as you can see, is that when I want when I want to touch the end of the screen, I need to readjust my hand position. And what happens is when I'm readjusting, I got to push back here and I have definitely missed some shots because of that. Uh, so I don't use the touch to drag autofocus that much. I just rather look at the screen and touch. Uh, it's not really Canon's fault. It's I think just because of the way it's implemented, the way of the size of the camera, you just really have to move your what. I know you can put it at the edge. However, like sometimes I overshoot and I don't like a small a small area. I like the whole area to be to be open when I when I adjust my focusing point. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Speaking of the EVF, obviously the EVF is nice and bright. Uh, it is full. Uh, I I really enjoy using the EVF when I need like another point of contact. But for the most part, once again, I only shoot with the back of the screen because ease of use. That's only why I'm here to get images not to look cool uh, and just having that touch screen at the back just makes more sense for me to get my shots faster. Last thing obviously about this camera that I really really like is its customizability. All these buttons are really customizable and I guess the only downside of that if you pick up an R you probably don't know how to use it if somebody has customized their buttons but that's all right. I set pretty much everything to a custom one. All these buttons are not the same, uh, are different from stock because that's just how I like to shoot. Even my menu button is at the top here. And the main reason why I like the menu button as my top is because I don't like to have to take my hand off to readjust to put the menu button here. I just like everything, all the buttons all in one hand just to control it. And that's what's really good is you can really tailor make or really tailor this camera to the way that you shoot and the way you like. Obviously, it's a lot of due diligence and you do have to dwell into the menus and you have to dwell into the camera to really understand what's going on. But once you do, you spend you know one or two hours just understanding and practicing with all the custom buttons that you've done, you realize that you shoot faster. And that's really the whole point of it. You know, that's the, really the whole point of customizing buttons is to, sh is to help you shoot a lot faster uh, than if you were to have non-customizable buttons. And that just helps you be a better photographer because you can anticipate moments much better. You can be present when you're shooting. And that's what I want. I want the camera to get out of my way. I just want to take pictures. So now we go on to another big portion of this and that is image quality. So now, in my opinion, it's very hard to buy a terrible camera, anything from 2014 onwards. Really, it's hard to buy crappy cameras. And the same is with this. If you're looking, if you're worried about image quality, trust me, that's not gonna be a problem. Uh, I'm not a pixel peeper myself, so I don't really look scientifically into like dynamic range 
and do these kind of things. Like if you're looking for test charge, I think there are a lot of videos that talk about it. Uh, but for me, as a real working professional in real world out there shooting, the reason why I like the image quality on this is because it's so easy to edit. Uh, straight out of the camera, most of the time, the pictures turn out really, really well. Um, I'm not the kind of guy that uses presets anymore. I've kind of straight away and I kind of like just retouch images based on like contrast, exposure, just really, really basic stuff because like I'm moving more towards natural looking images. I think this is the color that looks timeless and that's why I like natural images versus like uh, more heavy stylized ones. And really when you're shooting with this camera, like the images coming out of this are fantastic. They're nice and sharp. Obviously, it really depends on the uh, lens that you're using but the colors that come out from this are nice. Skin tones are obviously really, really good. There's enough dynamic range for me to play with, especially when you're shooting in RAW. So I think 30 megapixels is a nice sweet spot between too many megapixels versus just enough so you're able to crop as much as you want. Uh, and I do utilize that to my full advantage. I do crop a lot more if I like can't really get to, I can't get the framing that I want. And really image quality, as you can see in the pictures that I've been flashing out through the entire video, it's hard to complain about the pictures. They, they look good, you know, and they're usable, very, very usable images. However, I do find that uh, C raw, I think it stands for compressed raw or, or something. I do find that to be a little bit less robust than the full raw, and I think that is to be expected. I personally find that uh, changing white balance and tint is a lot harder on C raw versus on the full raw. Uh, but that's just me. So another thing that a lot of people are not talking about, I feel like is the 1.6 times crop on this camera. It's not something that I have on like my 5D or even my 1DX, which I'm not too sure why. Sometimes you just can't move your feet to get the shot and you just need to crop in that much. You just, that, that just one bit just to get that extra reach uh, really is a lifesaver. The one thing that's a bit, impl uh, a bit wonky about it is that you can't have a shortcut button for the 1.6 times crop, which I find a little bit strange. So I have to use it on the screen or in the menu. Uh, I just got used to it. However, I would have liked to see like being able to customize one button to change it to 1.6 X crop and then go back out. So something else that the R does is the silent shutter. And really for in natural light, the silent shutter works really, really well. It is silent. Uh, you can't hear anything. However, uh, the two downsides of it is number one, in artificial light, there is going to be bending. Uh, another thing is that if you're shooting fast moving subjects, you will have this warping, like basically that jello effect, which I can show you a couple of images here. When you're shooting fast moving objects and when you're moving fast, uh, I don't suggest shooting silent shutter. Something that's really cool that I think a lot of people don't talk about also is the multiple exposure on this camera. Now, multiple exposures sound like something that's, oh man, why, why should it be there? Why, you want, what, why do you want to talk about it? But having multiple exposures just give you that little bit of flair in your images that might sell you a lot better, that might get clients back to you. You don't have to use it all the time, but when you do, it's like, whoa. And of course you can do it in Photoshop, but if you can do it right there in person, that's just making you much more efficient as a photographer. And it's things like this that really sell the camera as a pro, as one of the best cameras for me. It's one of those small, small features that really help add more value to your clients as a photographer and something that I think a lot of us should be looking at versus the highest megapixel or the fastest frame rate or things like that. Last thing that I do want to say is the low light on this. Uh, I am more comfortable shooting at 3200 versus shooting at 6400. I do find like it's a little bit too noisy for my preference, but for some of you it might be okay. But really in low light situations with the right lens, you can get really, really good images in extreme low light conditions. Uh, speaking of burst rates, obviously five frames per second if I'm not mistaken, but for me, it doesn't really matter. I haven't really found an issue where I needed more. It's obviously not a sports camera. The AF can't keep up for sports in my opinion. Uh, but the five frames is more than enough for most situations that you will encounter. And so obviously the last segment for like photography is the autofocus. Now autofocus is something that Canon is very, very, very well known for. The dual pixel autofocus is one of the best, if not the best in the market. Uh, having the eye detect or having the uh, face detection just really helps, especially when I'm shooting portraits wide open. I kind of like, like shooting wide open and the problem is last time when I'm shooting on like my DSLR, my 5D Mark IV, I tend to miss a little bit wide open because these lenses are just too shallow. 
and sometimes they can be very inaccurate and that's where having eye detection or face detection really helps. Even with the face detection on my 5D, it sometimes misses a little bit and that's why I want the eyes to be in focus and that's just features that help me become a better photographer. And something that I have found that is like, for some weird reason, focus on this, uh, even on my 51.2, is a lot sharper than on my 5D. I'm not so sure why it just looks sharper on the R than on the 5D, even though they're both in focus. I think maybe it's just that this is a little bit more in focus. Uh, I can't explain why I really, really can't, but that's just something you're gonna have to take my word for. For the most part, autofocus has been very reliable. However, I find that in when the subject is not well lit, the camera will struggle to get focus and that's just something that I think is common across the board for all kinds of cameras, even pro cameras. On longer focal lengths when you're using the adapter, it struggles a little bit, it hunts a little bit more than I would like to. But when you're using native RF lenses, everything just works very well and that's what I'm looking for in this. A few things about focusing, even manual focusing, you can have focus peaking and you have this thing called focus guide. I grew accustomed to manually focusing photo and video uh, so just having the focus guide just helps me tell if I'm focused a little bit more as well as the focus speaking. I find the focus speaking not as accurate. I find that I miss a little bit more, but maybe it's just my eyes, but that's just something that you got to keep in mind. If you're using RF lenses, if you find that this like fly-by-wire doesn't work, you can actually set it in the menu to by rotation versus by speed. Uh, and that really helps you go back to like the traditional kind of light in the focusing ring. I just want to quickly wrap up with a few thoughts about the video side of it. Uh, basically what's really nice about this camera for video is C-Log obviously like <laughs> it's so easy to grade. I'm no colorist myself and that's why it's easy for me to just get nice color straight out. Really gives you much better dynamic range and uh, one thing I have found is don't underexpose C-Log, please overexpose by maybe half a stop. Uh, you get much nicer images and you have less uh, noise in your shot. Another thing is the time-lapse feature on this is a godsend, like I don't have to have an external intervalometer, such a difficult word. However, I do find that you can only go down to two seconds in your the shortest interval, which I wish you could go down to one or, or even less. Uh, but that's just the limitations, I guess. I can just quickly set up where as I'm shooting an event, I can quickly just do my shots, set up a time-lapse really, really fast, a 10-minute time-lapse, and I'm done. Another thing is the electronic stabilization. Unfortunately, this camera does not have IBIS. I'm so glad the R5 does, but the, I, the electronic stabilization really works very well uh, until you start moving. Uh, there's a slight crop, obviously, but when you move too much, there is a lot of wobble and things like that. So um, don't move too much. It's like, it's, it helps more when you're stable. I don't use it too much because I rig out my camera for the most part and it's weight and inertia that will give you solid images, uh, a solid video, a solid stable video versus like relying on electronic stabilization. The high bit rate on this camera is a really, really robust, sharp 1080p. And obviously the only thing I don't like is the, the crop on the 4K and the huge file sizes for 4K. But I don't shoot 4K, so that doesn't really make a difference for me. Uh, the movie cropping mode on this is fantastic as well. You can sh uh, just being able to crop just like the 1.6X crop for photography. However, you can't crop in 60 frames. Not so sure why, uh, but that just is. Going back to customizations, you can have both custom functions, custom buttons for your each for photo and video. So if you switch to photo from video or video photo, you can have completely separate customizable buttons that fit that shooting style for that. Which is something that I wish all cameras had, which is crazy. Like it's just it's just small, small things that really help you become a much better shooter uh, with this camera. So overall, really, those are the small, there are small quirks that I don't like with the camera, obviously like the ergonomics, certain things are really hard to hold, uh, certain bit rates, uh, certain like the 4K crop and things like that, uh, not really a huge fan. I would like to see dual card slots, but it's not a really big deal for me. So just to wrap it up, why I think the R is really the best camera that you can get right now is not necessarily because of specific highlight features, but really the camera in totality. Everything from the way it functions, to its ergonomics, the physical aspects of it, to small, small features uh, within the camera that allows you to become a much better photographer from the touchscreen to the battery, uh, to the cost of media, to the lens mount, to the lenses itself. I think this really plays into the idea that a camera might not necessarily be the best on specs on black and white paper, but in real life situations, this camera just functions and performs incredibly. It has never failed me. It has always worked for every single shoot that I've taken it out and it has not failed me. And I think 
if you already shoot in the Canon ecosystem, something that's really underrated is the fact that this camera matches every other camera that you shoot that is Canon. It matches my 5D, it matches my 1DX, it matches my older Canon cameras. And really that's what you want to create. You want to create a consistent look. You want to create a consistent feel across your cameras. And when my camera works well, fits within the gear that I already have, it's hard to complain about this camera. It does all these things. It is not, once again, not the best spec camera, but I think that when you take this camera and you look at it from a bigger perspective, from a practical real world scenario, really this, this camera is hard to beat. A camera on specs alone isn't enough to tell whether this camera is bad or not. You really have to use it and you really have to look for key features that really fit the kind of style that you're looking for because there's always gear that fits specific needs. There is no one size fits all unfortunately and if you're talking about like an all-rounder reliable, the R really is hard to beat. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about the R that I did not cover, uh, please do ask me a question in the comments, in my Instagram here and here. I'll be more than happy to answer and help you out. Uh, thank you so much once again. Uh, guys, please stay safe, uh, drink water, sanitize your hands and things like that. Please don't go out until this whole thing uh, dies over and I will see you uh, hopefully alive in the next one.